Uh, it wasn't for Q Logic, we wouldn't be here. I want to say thanks to Rob and his team at Q Logic for providing the booth space for Oracle Open World, and for the folks out there. Oracle, um, we, there's no space available for SiliconANGLE and the Cube. Um, you know, they're hardcore. They want to control all their you know video operations themselves. The big company, and uh, we got in through Q Logic and uh, EMC and Intel supporting us, and we're on the ground bringing you all the coverage of Oracle Open World. And uh, San Francisco is essentially shut down. Traffic's stopped everywhere. Oracle has got 45,000 people in San Francisco, and um, it's just absolutely insane here. Um, biz dev going on, people partying, doing deals, Dave, all around the world. Oracle is a huge company, 800-pound gorilla, and the bottom line is, is that Oracle is one of those companies like Apple that is, uh, you know, controls the industry at an enterprise level. We know Apple on the consumer side, Oracle's the Apple of the enterprise, and, uh, and they're trying to change. Oracle used to own the, you know, you know, e CRM, ERP, all those biz software, big database applications. Now the world's changing to open source, cloud, mobile, big data. And anyone who's developing software knows that they, that's a like big opportunity. And Oracle's kind of the incumbent, Dave. They are the, the big guys that everyone's trying to steal market share from. So um, whether you're an entrepreneur, startup, or, or a company, you want to compete with some of those scraps. So for Oracle, you know, they're clutching onto the marketplace. Um, they're trying to control everything, and uh, that's Oracle. You know, John, I'm reminded of a comment that Tom Georgens has made on theCUBE. He said, the headlines are relentlessly bad, but business is good. Uh, or maybe he said it in reverse, but uh, yet again, the, the market is down uh, 100 points. What's the, Apple the stock doing right now? Apple is down. Um, interestingly, the NASDAQ is up. Yeah. Um, but So what's but, the current? Okay, so you can see from the screen here, we have a live picture of uh, the Apple keynote, which is going on in Cupertino, California. Um, we could not get the cube there in time. Um, we, you know, trying to you know get there and uh, get finance to go do these big events like Apple, and soon we'll be there. But right now, we're covering Oracle. Uh, but Apple's announcement is the iPhone 4S, and we're still waiting to hear about the iPhone 5 and other announcements. Obviously, their operating system is shipping like crazy. The big news there is that you know, Lion has really been a successful product, and the iPhone 4S. So, you're looking at Apple. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so they're going through the feature listings of the new 4S, and uh, we're going to continue to get coverage here. Um, if I had Wi-Fi up uh, here, I'd have more access to, to data, so Mark Risen Hopkins is yelling the, uh, the features over the wire here. But so basically it's off on no iPhone 5, right? Yeah, no iPhone 5 announcement yet. No iPhone 5 announcement yet, but, but we still may see it today. So I think if you look or at the screen, Dave, if you look at the, the market screen, market doesn't think for, so. For the folks out, okay. for the folks out there watching the the picture here, um, we just want to talk. Com I'll do some commentary on Apple because really we talked about this yesterday here inside the cube at Oracle, and is that the world is lagging in this enterprise business on the consumerization side, meaning that the user experience and the user interface really sucks compared to what Apple's doing. So if you look at what Apple's done, they've absolutely revolutionized the user experience, the user interface, and even Android, which has some cool features, is so far away from being close to Apple in terms of user interface, user experience, and the iPad, and how they do that is really hard to do. Apple has a, a huge lead on the tablets. I still don't think anyone's going to catch up to Apple for at least a couple years on the iPad side. On the iPhone side, we all know how revolutionary that was. And they continue to, to change the game. If you look at their reader, they're integrating media. iTunes obviously is iTunes, and the App Store has just been a huge success. Apple continues at every single level to dominate on a performance basis of both products and finances. And you talk about the Apple stores. Apple stores, you know, people would thought Apple was crazy for launching retail, Dave. And the, and the fact of the matter is, it's been, it's been so successful, <laughs> successful because one, the stores are beautiful, and the products in there are good, and Apple takes huge painstaking steps to make sure that the products that go into the Apple store are good. And <laughs> what's worse is, well worse or better for Apple, is that they take 50% of the cash. So if you and I come up with a really killer product and get in the Apple store, we have to give up 50% of our revenue just to be stocked in the Apple retail outlets. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. You get in, to the Apple store, you make a, a boatload of money on the product, but Apple gets 50% of the revenue. I still think it's a good deal. I definitely would do that deal. Well, and your point about the uh, the retail presence, Ron Johnson ended up at JCPenney, right? They, Ron Johnson's the guy who basically brought Apple to the retail marketplace, and uh, huge. So the news today, John, is that 
that evidently Apple will not announce an iPhone 5. They're going to announce an iPhone 4S. Same dimensions, uh, I guess, as the four but more powerful guts. So, you know that teardrop-shaped device that we 